Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's about mid-morning of the middle of the week, and so we spend these few minutes together. I've got my cup of coffee. I guess that's required when you call something like this coffee with PC. Uh, when got a, one of the pods we have at home, brewed it up to have my third cup of the morning to spend these few minutes with you. A busy day, an exciting day, an interesting day. Um, for this reason, it's the culmination of something I started over, well, I guess a year and a half ago now, um, and that's on our Wednesday night study together. Uh, like I said, about a year and a half ago. I should have looked up the exact date now that I think about it. Maybe I'll do it before our class tonight. Um, we started what was called at the time the Journey Through the Hebrew Bible, um, and and it was a, it was a designed to look at what we call the Old Testament as Christians, but is the Hebrew Bible, the Bible of the Jewish folks, and we looked at it in the order uh, that they put it together to get some different insights into it. And I had just a great time doing that. Uh, went through the Hebrew Bible. It took 40 sessions or 40 weeks to do that. Now, 40, that's a good biblical number when you think about it. And so it was kind of apropos that it ended after 40 weeks. And what we did after a time of introduction, four or five weeks of that, we looked at every one of those books in the Hebrew Bible over the course of the next 40 or so weeks. And, and I, like I said, I've enjoyed it as much as anything I've done as far as personal study and preparation. Out of that, the natural question was, well, are we going to do the New Testament now? We've looked at the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. Are we going to look at the New Testament? So we started uh, the journey through the New Testament after that. And tonight is the 30th of those sessions, the journey through the New Testament. We looked at the beginning uh, uh, four or five weeks, again, introductory before we got into the actual content, the books of the New Testament. And tonight is the 30th of this session. So the 30th week, so 40 plus 30 equals 70, seven and 10, two good biblical numbers of completeness. So 70 sessions, a journey through the Hebrew Bible, and now a journey through the New Testament, con concluding tonight. And, you know, thinking about it, it's been, uh, well, a very rewarding process. I hope it's been helpful for the folks who have been a part of it. My goal in it was not to get down and dirty. If you come on Sunday mornings, you know what we do is get into the minutia in the sense of we go through a book of the Bible uh, pretty much verse by verse. We're in Hebrews now. Um, we started, I forget exactly when. So we've been doing that for several years. We just pick a book and we make our way through it. Uh, so we get into the details of it. The, the Wednesday night study has been sort of like a quick flyover, a, a big picture overview where we talked about um, the book where it falls historically and in, in the story of the canon, what's going on historically, who the author is about the time it was written, the reason it was written, all of that sort of thing. So it was a, a quick overview. Sometimes it'd take a couple of weeks on some of the longer um, books or the more detailed books, but really just a high level overview. And my goal of, or my, my hope, I should say, not my goal, maybe my goal in doing it, was that the folks that were a part of that would whenever they picked up the scriptures, whenever they picked up the Bible to read it, they would have sort of a framework upon which to hang what they were reading. So if you were reading in, in the Hebrew Bible, maybe in, in one of the prophets, you would have this background of where does that fit in, in the overview and, and what's going on? Oh, I'm in Isaiah. Oh, that's right. We're, we're talking about exile that's coming up. And why did Isaiah write? And what did he have to say? And what was he trying to, to do? Or, or you maybe get into the historical books. Oh, we're in Judges, all of these stories of different people. What's going on there? Oh, that's after they've come into the promised land, but before there's a king. And what's it trying to tell us? And, and, and so I hope it was helpful in that way and, and looking at all of the books that way, I know, as I said, it was helpful for me. So it's that framework, it's that, that, that structure, that skeleton, if you were to set, call it, that you can hang your, your, your view and, and, and understanding of the scriptures on. I tried to look at, at times, things from a different point of view as well, a typical point of view we don't get when we just pick it up and, and read or read the brief introduction that might be in a Bible saying what this book is covering or what this section is covering. And, and I really enjoyed it. And here's, here's my takeaway. I said it a lot 
at the beginning. I said it a lot as we went through um, the, the Hebrew Bible together, the Old Testament together. A great reminder for all of us all the time, what is the Bible about? Well, the Bible's about God. Th that's what the Bible's about. Now, now, it's got some fascinating things in it, some fascinating accounts in it. We, you might know some of the more familiar accounts. Maybe it's, uh, you know, we think of some of those Old Testament stories, uh, Noah's Ark, or, or maybe we think about Jonah and the whale, you know, we got Daniel in the lion's den, David and Goliath. You know, we've got these big picture um, remembrances of, of these key stories throughout the, the Hebrew Bible, particularly, we get to, to the New Testament, and maybe you think of some of the, the miracles or the teachings of Jesus, certainly the cross and the resurrection vital, the, the history of the early church as it begins to go. We have these, these sort of benchmarks along the way, things that, that, that are probably pretty well or popularly known. Um, but in that, sometimes we forget that the, the point of the whole story is God that the Bible is God's revelation of himself, and the reason he gave it to us was so that we would know him or know about him so that we could come to know him. So when, for instance, we read the story of Noah and the ark, the story isn't making a hero, isn't designed, I should say, to make a hero out of Noah. The story is designed to see Noah's life and what it teaches us about God. And so what happens sometimes, and maybe it's our, our modern way of looking at things, the, the, the undercurrent of, of do-it-yourself or self-help culture that, that's so uh, much a part of how we think that, that we have so much access to learning and, and doing things that, that we read a story and, and we want to find the lesson in it for us. We read the story of Daniel in the lion's den, for instance. A great, great account where Daniel boldly stands up uh, in the midst of an order that says he could only pray to, to the king, and he prays to God, and he's turned in, and the punishment's to be thrown in the lion's den. And we think, well, well, how can we dare to be a Daniel, to be brave and strong, as if the point of the story is to give us an example in Daniel to, to follow. Well, there are some things we can learn from Daniel's example, certainly, but the point of the story isn't that we should be a Daniel. The point of the story is what can we learn about God? The Bible at its core is ultimately about God. Uh, let me put another thread to this thing. Maybe uh, what, something that, that you are familiar with, a person I should say that you're familiar with, and that's Pastor Tim Keller. Um, he was pastor at Redeemer Presbyterian Church most recently in New York City. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because uh, he passed away not long ago. And yesterday uh, was his memorial service. It was streamed online. He was an author, a pastor, um, went to the big city, New York, you would think, not the bastion of Christianity, and started a ministry there that grew and grew and grew. And he became a key figure, a well-respected religious figure in what many people would say is the secular center of, of New York City um, and Gotham, you know, that kind of an area, he, right in the heart of, of Manhattan and that Redeemer itself grew and, and there are other Redeemer uh, campuses that were planted out of that initial thing. Just a really remarkable story of how God used uh, this, this pastor, this man and, and this author for us. Um, really appreciate uh, reading many of his books and I've listened to many of his sermons. Probably uh, my favorite one is his riff on Jesus as the true and better. I've used it, I've quoted it a few times in, in scripture where he points out, you know, Jesus is the true and better Adam. Jesus is the true and better Abel. Jesus is the true and better Joseph. Jesus is the true and better Jonah or Daniel or Noah. All of these characters that, that are the heroes that we, we elevate and want to emulate and learn the lessons from, he reminds us in that riff that, that the point of their lives wasn't them, it was ultimately God revealing himself and God revealing himself finally in Jesus that all of them pointed us beyond themselves. And so, so the Bible ultimately becomes a book about God. And, and that's, that's a very important thing to remember when we pick up the Bible. It's not a self-help book. 
It's not a book that's designed to give us uh, moral lessons that we should follow or moral examples that we're supposed to follow. We're not supposed to go out and say, where is our Goliath that we need to take on? That's not the point of that story at all. Uh, And so we have to remember the Bible is ultimately about God, God revealing himself and finally and fully doing it as the book of Hebrews tells us at the very beginning in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. What's that central story about Jesus? It's, it's his death and it's his resurrection. All of the Bible builds to that point. And as I, I think about 40 weeks in the Hebrew Bible and now after tonight, 30 weeks in the New Testament, how the center point of all of that is the life and ministry and death and resurrection of Jesus, how everything hinges on that. In fact, even history hinges on those events of Jesus's life, death, and resurrection. We separate AD and BC based upon, now I know BCE and and, uh, CE are the the more uh, scientific or secular ways, but nonetheless, that's where it goes back to. We don't change the words if you want, common era or or Anno Domini, it doesn't matter. We're talking about the same midpoint of history. We're talking about the same events in history that really transformed everything. And the scriptures, when we see them as God's story, not Abraham's story, not Isaac's story, not not Jacob's story, not Joseph's story, not Daniel's story, not Paul's story, not Peter's story, but the story of God, especially as we see it fully and finally fulfilled in Jesus. Well, it begins it begins to sink in a little bit. And so, so I hope as I've gone through this 70 weeks, boy, that's, a, that's actually a great number um, with these folks that have been a part of it, that it, it's helped reorient our thinking toward who God is and what he's showing us about himself through the scriptures. And in that, particularly in that middle point, that life and death and resurrection of Jesus. Tim Keller quote, he said this, if the resurrection of Jesus is true, then everything's going to be all right. You know, if the Bible is really about God and Jesus is God in the flesh, and the moment that defines who Jesus is, is his death and resurrection. If that is true, then everything's gonna be all right. What is everything? Well, it's everything, right? We've said comically a few times, all means all. Everything means everything. Everything's gonna be all right. Yes, the, there's lots of good that we experience in life, but sometimes there's lots of bad, like in this case, for, for Tim Keller's family, his loss. Because if the resurrection is true, everything's gonna be all right. I hope you know that. I hope you understand that God reveals himself to us through the scriptures, that he has done it to show us his goodness and grace, his love, his justice, his mercy, his righteousness, his holiness, and and so much more that I can't even begin to articulate, demonstrated for us, not in a book of moral tales, of, of old school heroes we're meant to emulate, but a book about God that we call the Bible, where he invites us in to get to know him. That's the biggest framework of of the, the skeleton that we could put together, that that's what the scriptures are about. And I hope in that you've come to know that because of who Jesus is, because of what he did by his death and resurrection, if the resurrection is true, everything's gonna be all right. I don't know what's going on with you today. I don't know what, what waits any of us tomorrow. But I do know, I do believe the resurrection is true. And I think there's some really good reason to believe that. Partly is the eyewitness accounts uh, that we have to record that, that, that the events of his life and ministry actually happened, including his resurrection. And if the resurrection is true, or maybe I should say, because the resurrection is true, everything's gonna be all right. When we come to know God as he reveals himself through his word, it is a remarkable sense that we get that he is in fact in control. Even when life seems out of control, we learn to trust him and follow him. That's what I've learned a little bit more going through this 70 weeks of preparation and study, probably got more out of it than anybody who sat through, if they sat through all 70 after tonight of the classes, I I probably got more out of it just in the process and learned to love and appreciate the scriptures more as, as kind of dug a little bit differently into them for that class. But this has been a very rewarding thing. So I thought I'd take a few minutes just to kind of 
reflect on it with you this Wednesday morning. Now, I'm sure like me, you got lots more to do. I have a few things left to get ready for that class a little bit later this evening, and I'm sure you've got some things on your to-do list for today. So as always, it is much appreciated and never taken for granted that, that you might spend a few minutes with me on Wednesday mornings. I'd love to have you spend a few minutes with us on Sunday mornings as well, nine o'clock. We have our worship service. We're live and in person here at Key Largo, or we stream it over the internet. Love to have you come join us if you're in town or if it's easier just to do the web thing, you can log in there on our website or on Facebook Live, this same place, maybe you're seeing this one, this video, our Coffee with PC video and, and, and join us uh, as we continue in the book of Hebrews. So I'll let you go. As I said, I'm sure you got many things to do and we'll hope to connect with you maybe on Sunday I'm not and if sure not, next Wednesday. Thanks so much.